my dear students hello welcome on this session we were doing hematopoietic system and the hematopoietic system we had completed the discussion of vitamin b12 and on this session we have some important features of folic acid folic acid deficiency is again megaloblastic anemia and the deficiency of folic acid in pregnancy leads to neural tube defects there are various interconvertible forms of folic acid they include 5 tetrahydrofolic acid which is also called folinic acid then there's 10 formyl thf and this 510 methylene thf folic acid works as a carbon donor in various one carbon atom transfer reactions example oxidation reactions and finally the dna synthesis you need to remember the link between folic acid and b12 in which n5 methyl tetrahydrofolate gets converted to tetrahydrofolate and b12 works as a cofactor so b12 and folate are interdependent on each other mild folic acid deficiency the dose for treating this is 1 to 5 mg per day and if it's severe deficiency we can give 5 to 10 mg per day and the indications for folic acid deficiency are those states in which the folic acid is likely to be exhausted obviously megaloblastic anemia due to the dietary deficiency of folic acid malabsorption states pregnancy and lactation because there's increased requirement of folic acid and as you know the pregnant woman has to be supplied with adequate amount of folic acid otherwise it can lead to neural tube defects in liver cirrhosis in liver diseases and in patients who are on chronic dialysis folic acid can get deficient there are few drugs which interfere with the folic acid pathways one of them is methotrexate it's an anti cancer agent and if methotrexate is given in large dose it can manifest as folic acid deficiency because methotrexate is opposing or inhibiting the conversion of dihydrofolate to the tetrahydrofolate and it is inhibiting the enzyme dhf reductase so obviously tetrahydrofolate will not be formed and the dna synthesis is going to get affected so we need to take care if the patient is receiving methotrexate and we aim at preventing the toxicity next substance which interferes is phenytoin phenytoin is an anti epileptic agent and this drug also inhibits the step and it leads to folic acid deficiency and the patient gets various symptoms of peripheral neuropathy not only this phenytoin is an anti epileptic agent if a pregnant woman receives this agent because she suffers from epilepsy it can lead to folic acid deficiency in the fetus and can produce neural tube defects so i hope now you are able to correlate why phenytoin given during pregnancy produces neural tube defects which is known by the name fetal hydantoin syndrome not only phenytoin there is carbamazepine there is valproic acid so in general all these three anti epileptic agents they can produce neural tube defects so phenytoin toxicity and if the patient is pregnant and is receiving phenytoin we need to take care of the folic acid chronic alcohol ingestion also depletes folate from the body and chronic alcoholics need folate folic acid supplementation i am taking you to the next slide where you are visualizing a picture and it is showing you how paba gets converted to dhf and dhf gets converted to thf so basically in this particular picture there are two reactions and if i just skip the minor details and you look at it follow the cursor this is the substrate and let's imagine this is just paba and straight way we imagine this is one step so paba to dhf dihydrofolic acid and dihydrofolic acid to tetrahydrofolic acid now if we want to go to the minor details of the step paba with dihydropteridine first leads to formation of dihydropteroic acid and this dihydropteroic acid gets the addition from glutamate and then it gets converted to dihydrofolic acid or dhf and dhf gets converted to thf if this is this is clumsy for you you can remember papa to dhf instead of dhf you can call it folic acid so simple 
PAPA to folic acid and this tetrahydrofolic acid THF you can call it folinic acid so PAPA to folate or folic acid folic acid to folinic acid that's another way to remember this particular reaction now if you come to the first step first step out of this conversion of PABA to DHF is inhibited by sulfur drugs sulfones sulfonyl urea I hope you understand these are all sulfonamide structure and many diuretics have got a sulfur structure so there's furosemide thiazide diuretics and acetazolamide many of them have got the sulfonamide structure so they are going to act on this step and they are going to decrease the availability of DHF whereas the second step trimethoprim, methotrexate, phenytoin and all the rest of them they are antimalarial agents pyrimethamine, priamaquine, progonyl etc all of them they inhibit the second step trimethoprim, methotrexate and phenytoin and now if you integrate what I just said previously about phenytoin and methotrexate toxicity then probably you will be able to imagine why, why there is deficiency of folic acid and how it is related to the toxicity so methotrexate and phenytoin are going to oppose this reaction and naturally there is deficiency of folic acid so in methotrexate therapy you can get deficiency of tetrahydrofolate when you give treatment with phenytoin especially to a pregnant woman the fetus can suffer from the tetrahydrofolic acid deficiency leading to the neural tube defects I hope it's well integrated now so this reaction is important for you to remember and will resolve many of the problems with the help of this reaction I would also like to add if you want to prevent the methotrexate toxicity you need to give something what will you give you will give folic acid or folinic acid it's so obvious folic acid to folinic acid is being prevented by methotrexate so there's no point in giving folic acid it's better to give folinic acid so in methotrexate toxicity we give folinic acid I hope you completed uh, visualization of this particular slide and you understood the two steps we move on to compare B12 and folic acid with the help of a table B12 and folic acid both are not synthesized by humans please remember this B12 is present abundantly in fish, meat, liver, eggs and milk look at that most of the substances are the substances which are consumed by the people who eat fish meat, liver, eggs there is only milk which the vegetarian peoples can consume so B12 deficiency is common in the people who are poor vegetarian who are pure vegetarians folic acid is present in the green leafy vegetables in the fruit milk meat eggs and liver so that's okay B12 requirement 2 to 3 micrograms per day folic acid requirement 50 micrograms per day in pregnancy and lactation it might go to 200 to 300 milligrams about the use of B12 cyano or hydroxycobalamine is used as 100 to 1000 micrograms per day on alternate days for first two weeks then every month intramuscularly if there is severe deficiency until the deficiency is met with by oral route for mild deficiency if it's pernicious anemia the same routine has to be followed lifelong I hope you realize it's pernicious anemia there's no intrinsic factor of castle so you need to give B12 lifelong initially you give it alternate day for two weeks then give it every month and then later every three months an injection of vitamin B12 so that's about vitamin B12 giving in pernicious anemia the patients also might need vitamin K going to folic acid 1 to 5 milligrams every day by oral route for mild deficiency and 5 to 10 milligrams for severe deficiency the next slide is telling you about folinic crisis or folinic or leucovorin rescue or it's also called citrovorum rescue what's this this is methotrexate toxicity so if the patient is on methotrexate as an anti-cancer agent 
there can be deficiency of folinic acid so the severe deficiency of folinic acid is called folinic crisis preventing the toxicity of high dose methotrexate the mechanism the method of doing this is the patient is receiving intravenous methotrexate then within half an hour to one hour give folinic acid that's 5 formal tetrahydrofolic acid 1 to 3 milligrams by intravenous route and this is going to help the normal cells which were which would have been otherwise suffering from the folic acid deficiency the substance which we are giving mind well is not folic acid it is folinic acid the other name of folinic acid is leucovorin one more name of folinic acid is citrovorum factor so you use any of these words you will be right and saving the patient in this way and preventing methotrexate toxicity is called folinic rescue or leucovorum rescue next we move on to see some of the hematopoietic or hemopoietic growth factors the first growth factor is erythropoietin or epoietin and now it's available as recombinant human epoietin it's written as small r then capital H small u r is for recombinant hu is for human and epo is for erythropoietin when it is needed is needed in severe cases of aplastic anemia you want to stimulate the production from the bone marrow so aplastic anemia and multiple myeloma patients who suffer from HIV disease and cancers and patients who are having zidovudine induced bone marrow suppression and anemia next patients with chronic renal failure to increase the hemoglobin concentration and erythropoietin is used by subcutaneous route of administration the second hematopoietic growth factor is granulocyte colony stimulating factor gcsf its other name is fulgrostem the third one is granulocyte macrophage colony stimulating factor so it's called gmcsf and its name is sargramostim both the factors are useful if the patient is suffering from neutropenia which is cancer chemotherapy induced or aplastic anemia in stem cell transplantation and in bone marrow transplantation please remember gmcsf is more toxic than gcsf the next hematopoietic growth factor is mega karyocyte growth factor that's interleukin 11 and it's also called opril vecin this is useful in the treatment and prevention of thrombocytopenia all these growth factors are specifically used in certain conditions and this might be useful to you in your multiple choice question because it's a specific answer for specific disease cancer chemotherapy induced thrombocytopenia can also be treated with mega karyocyte growth factor or interleukin 11 please remember the next slide all hematopoietic growth factors are proteins and the molecular weight is more than 15000 so their peptide bonds they get destroyed by the gastric acid and the digestive enzymes so you cannot administer the hematopoietic growth factors by oral route of administration they always have to be injected so this was the discussion about hematopoietic growth factors i hope this short module of the folic acid as well as the hematopoietic growth factors was useful to you i wish you good luck and thank you